Hi guys, my name is Maria and welcome to another video. Before we get into the video, I thought that we would do something different this time. So I thought, why not start with a corny bird joke? Okay? Okay. I got a corny but funny one. Why did the pelican get kicked out of the restaurant? Hmm? Because he had a very big bill. <laughs> Not funny, but I thought could add a little bit of entertainment to this video. Hi guys, so for today's video, I thought that we would talk about the five best parrots for beginner bird owners. So this is for anybody that is thinking about getting their first bird, but you guys aren't sure where to start, where to look, what types of birds to look into, this is a video for you. So keep watching. I would also like to point out that I did not say that these are the five top birds for beginner pet owners. I said beginner bird owners because birds in general are not beginner pets. They're not good beginner pets to have. Yes, we had a bit of a different situation and we jumped in head first even though we have had pets in the past, but it worked out for us. But definitely not the way to start. To start, that's the best. If you guys are thinking about getting a beginner pet, then I would advise you start with a hamster or even a dog is easier than taking care of these guys. And also I would like to say that this list of the five best beginner birds are not in any particular order and it is not a complete list. This is just a li list of five birds that I thought would be beneficial for anybody who wants to get into taking care of birds and getting their first bird. Bird number one. So the first bird that I think is um, a good bird to begin having birds with is a budgie. These little birds are very small sized. They're not big like some of the other birds, well, a lot of the other birds out there. And they are also very affordable. They're probably one of the most affordable birds because birds in general are not very affordable and they are kind of really expensive, as I have mentioned on my channel before. And also, they are beautiful and they come in many different colors. So that would be fun to choose which color you'd want. And they also love interacting with humans. So they are very social birds and they need, do need time outside of their cage. Although being on the smaller side, they are a little more skittish than some of the bigger birds, but they're still very handleable. And if you handle them and if you let them out of, your, of their cage and you play with them and you spend time with them, then they will definitely really love interacting with you. And you could definitely enjoy having them as a pet. Also, they can be taught tricks and they have been known to be taught to talk even, to say certain words, although I don't know how good the clarity is, but there's definitely been budgies that have spoken in a really cute little chirpy voice. So that's also fun and very possible with some work. And also budgies need a lot of toys and consistent cage cleanings because they destroy those toys because they like to chew on them with their beaks. And so you need to clean their cage consistently, maybe a few times a week, maybe more depending on your bird and the needs of your specific bird. So they're definitely going to be kept clean. And also as budgies, they also follow a typical bird diet. So the typical bird diet is a quality palette, 
some mixed seeds from time to time, leafy greens, veggies, and maybe a little bit of fruit here and there. Not a lot, but a little bit because fruit are high in calories and high in sugar and it's not very good for your bird to be eating all the time. They, and another good, well, what you can think of as either a pro or a con is that budgies can pretty much only live up to 10 years or, you know, in most cases less. So if you're getting a budgie, you are not committing to a bird, let's say, that's going to live maybe 50 years. So if you go with a budgie, that is much less of a commitment to make. And that's a pro, or I guess, whichever way you look at it. Bird number two. So the second beginner friendly bird to have as a pet is would be the cockatiel. A cockatiel are little cocky birds with a, with crests on their heads and rosy cheeks. They are they are also very energetic, need a lot of time outside of their cage and need a lot of human interaction. They love to be social and you can't just put them in a cage and not socialize with them because that would be very detrimental to the cockatiel's health. They are also very teachable and intelligent birds that can be talkative, can be taught to talk in little chirpy voices that are not quite as good talk quality as some of the bigger birds, but definitely understandable. And their diet is also very simple. Their diet consists of water, which of course you need for every single type of bird. You need water available at all times, all day long. And they need a little bit of seeds here and there, some veggies and a little bit of fruit. That's pretty much the diet of a cockatiel, so definitely not as complicated as some of the other diets of the other birds. And they, since they're energetic, they love to use their beaks and chew stuff up and play with toys, so they definitely need more space outside of the cage and also a bigger cage too so that they can stretch their wings and be able to move around and take their energy out when you're not home. They, since they are bigger than a budgie, although they're still considered on the small end, but they're bigger than a budgie, they need bigger space to roam about. Also, cockatiels, maybe you thought the budgie lived too little. So, on the other hand, a cockatiel you have can live a long time. So you can take that as either a pro or a con because if you if you don't want that heartbreak that comes with losing a pet after you know not that long of a time and you want to commit to a a bird really really and bond with a bird really really strongly then maybe you'd want to go with the cockatiel because the cockatiel lives a longer time on average than the budgie does. Bird number three. So the third most beginner friendly bird I would say is the conure. Conures encompass various species of small to medium birds and there are very, very many different kinds of conures available to buy. They can also talk, are highly energetic, and need a lot of time outside of their cage. All that pent up energy needs to be let out somehow. And their lifespan is up to 30 years. They, many conures are on the bigger side. I have a little Grinchy conure, which he's busy doing stuff right now, but, um, a lot of the conures are bigger than that, so what would be considered a medium bird. So definitely a lot of choices to choose from that. And they do need a big, 
a big cage, so definitely try to get a cage that's as big as possible. And they also follow the typical pear diet. Again, quality palettes, veggies, and sometimes fruit, which is pretty standard when it comes to most birds. And they are also very messy and require lots of cage cleanings a week. For example, personally, my husband and I end up scrubbing the walls a lot of times because our conure, Sam, just likes to throw food out of his bowl that he doesn't like. Food that's in his chop that he doesn't want to eat. And it ends up on the wall and then we have to scrub it off. So that is definitely something to consider because that's not very fun, let me tell you. And they can also be very tame with proper handling and training, but if you don't handle your bird a lot, then they can definitely become very aggressive and nippy, but you can definitely work on that and in time your bird can become a very, very sweet and affectionate bird. Bird number four. So the fourth beginner friendly bird on my list is the canary. I do not have a lot of experience with those birds, but from the research I have done, they are a very good choice for first time bird owners. Their diets consist of only fruits and veggies, and maybe sometimes seed, but not required. And they also need very little attention, as opposed to all the other birds I've mentioned, like budgies and cockatiels. Canaries do not need to be let out of their cage. They are not birds that need to be handled. They more so just like to stay in their cage and socialize with other kinds with others of their same kind. So you don't need to let them out and socialize with them, but they do socialize with other canaries. And pretty much the only thing that you need to do with you know not having to let them out is to clean their cages. Because definitely, definitely possible for them to be messy. You never know. And birds in general are pretty messy, I would say. Their lifespan is no more than 10 years usually, but in some circumstances, they can live up to 15 years. So that's definitely less of a commitment. So either pro or con, depending how you look at it. And, um, you know, because they live a little bit longer than let's say the budgie, there is less chance of heartbreak because you won't have to say bye to your bird as fast but there is also less commitment because they live a shorter period of time. And canaries are social creatures. They need to be in groups with others like them. That's very important for their health and well-being. They have very nice singing voices. That is what the canaries are known for the most is their singing voices. And they are very affordable, which again is a big plus when you're looking at birds who go for thousands and thousands of dollars. And they are, however, not and, but on the downside, they are very small and fragile. So maybe not the best bird to have if you have little kids because, you know, little children, they like to grab birds and maybe they don't know how to handle them properly. So maybe a small and fragile bird like a canary would not be the best option in that case. And they are also sensitive, well, more sensitive to temperatures and noise changes and less adaptable than a lot of other birds. So that is also something to consider. Bird number five. So the fifth beginner bird on my list is the lovebird. Lovebirds are known to be very playful and social. Ideally, it's good if you keep them in pairs, but that is not required. They are also, in general, less loud and messy than a lot of the other birds. So that is a good pro to consider. And also, that would make a good potential apartment bird. 
as opposed to a lot of other birds that can get very, very loud. Let me tell you, our house is a zoo. Like right now, you hear background noises. That is day and night for us. I'm used to it, but that might be a detriment for a lot of other people that haven't had birds before. They are also smaller in size and come in a lot of pretty colors, which can be fun to pick out. And which means they need smaller cages and less toys because they definitely are not as big as some of the other birds on this list. They're also highly trainable, although they are known to be a little bit stubborn, so they might require more work to train them than some of the other birds on this list. But again, you never know. You might get a very trainable and very not stubborn lovebird, so can't really know that 100%. So their diet consists of seed blocks, pallets, veggies, grains, and fruit. Mostly anything healthy you can give your lovebird, but lovebirds can be pretty picky when it comes to food. So if that's the case, then just try to find food that they like and that is good for them. And also, although this doesn't happen very often, Make sure that your lovebird remains at a healthy weight because sometimes when you give a lovebird food, availability to food all day long, sometimes they can gain weight and be at an unhealthy weight, which is definitely not good for their health. And as I've said before, they do like to be social and interact with humans, but it takes a lot more work than with some of the other birds. So. If you are somebody who gets frustrated easily and you want a bird that will just bond with you right off the bat, then maybe a lovebird is not the best route to take. So in order to summarize everything that I have mentioned in this video, all of the above birds that I've mentioned can be good choices for a new or beginner bird owner. But again, it all depends on what you are looking for and what your specific pros and cons are. Some, for somebody, a certain bird, a long lifespan might be a pro, and for others it might be a con. So it just depends on your individual situation. Also, you need to make sure, even though I have put this list for you, you also, before getting a bird, you need to make sure that you do your own research and you dive deep and far into the kind of bird that you want to get so that you can make sure that this is a bird that will work for your family and for your circumstances and for your overall living situation because you can't give a bird back. Well, you can, but it's definitely not something that you want to be doing because it's stressful for the bird. And also, if you want a pet bird, why would you want to give it back in the first place? So definitely, you need to approach this very carefully and make sure that you know exactly what you are signing up for and what kind of bird is best for you. So basically, when all is said and done, just do not do what we did. Do not jump semi head first into getting birds without even really knowing that much about them. For us, again, it worked out. We were ready to make it work no matter what, but that is not something that is a smart idea for a lot of, a lot, majority of people out there who are interested in getting birds. So I would definitely recommend that you look into getting a good beginner bird and not a more advanced bird that requires more, more care like this girl over here or even this guy. So thank you for watching my video, guys. I hope you learned something and you know, you were maybe given some information that you have never heard before. So if you liked this video, please like, subscribe, ring the bell so you can get notified whenever I put out new videos. And I would also, again, like to mention that this is not, this was not a complete list. These were just five parrots that I have done research on and I'm mostly familiar with. 
there is definitely a lot more. And if you guys can think of any other good beginner birds that could be good for beginners to have, please list, it, list them in the comments. Oh, and also, guys, let me know if you liked that cheesy bird joke that I mentioned at the very beginning of the video um, so that I can know whether I should continue doing them or not. I mean, maybe, you know, add some lightheartedness and entertainment to a pretty knowledge dense video. So let me know if you enjoyed that or not. Thanks guys. Thank you for watching. Bye.